Are you searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World. I wasn't even looking for becoming a Catholic or a Christian even. You know, like I wasn't even going down the path of trying to even understand who God was. God, in his infinite mercy, just decided to say, well, it's time for him to come now. Gave me the experience on the oil rig. Made that experience so dramatic, I guess, because he felt that I probably needed that. I honestly have not doubted the existence of God and the existence of Jesus Christ as the Son of God and my Saviour and His dying on the cross for my sins for one second since that time. I didn't grow up in the church. Uh, my grandparents were um, Anglicans and they went to church faithfully on Sundays. Um, my family uh, weren't churchgoers and um, I did go to an Anglican high school, uh, but that at that time didn't really mean anything to me. I briefly, very briefly thought about the existence of God in my teenage years at school uh, and quickly dismissed those ideas as ridiculous. One time I remember I was out there sitting on my surfboard and the waves were like literally six inches tall. And I remember um, praying to God, well, Huey, I called him. And I remember saying, come on, Huey, please send me some waves. This is ridiculous. I was sitting out there in flat water. And then I actually caught myself afterwards and I said, how can I pray when I don't actually believe in a God? And um, little did I know that that deep within my heart, there was a real, I guess, emptiness or, or a gap. Um, that, that little exclamatory prayer that I did when I was sitting on my surfboard out in the water, that little excl exclamatory prayer was like um, a sign that I was missing something. I uh, did the normal things as a kid. I went to school, um, I had great friends through school. I did well. And then I joined the army when I was 17. Uh, got accepted into ADFA uh, to do officer training and that was an interesting time if I could put it that that way. So academically I was, I was never too bad but that year I failed all my exams except for one and mainly because I had a super 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 bad attitude. Um, it was hilarious because I was in the army and at one point I refused to cut my hair which in the army is not a real good look. That, so that's interesting but I got I had I guess my teenage rebellion uh, in my when I was 17 turning 18 in the army and um, and I refused to do any of my assignments and I, and, and I was out drinking uh, four nights a week so I left the army and um, and I came home and uh, just just barely 18 and I remember within probably two days of coming home I went out one night with my friends and didn't get home till 3 a.m. in the morning and I remember my mum saying you know uh, look uh, that's unacceptable. You know, you need to be back by a reasonable time, even though you're 18. And um, and and I remember, you know, having a big Barney with her, saying, um, you know, look, I've just been in the army. I've been away for 12 months. You can't tell me that I can't come home when I want to. And she said, and she did one of the best things that she ever that a mother could do. She said, okay, that's fine. You don't want to live under under the rules in my house, you've got to start paying board. And I was so pig-headed and stubborn at that time that I actually started paying board so I could go out with my friends. And, uh, and I started university in Perth again, studying surveying, and my wildness um, continued. Uh, you know, we were out drinking at least three nights a week, sometimes uh, drinking a lot. Um, sometimes driving and drinking at the same time. I remember coming home, um, bouncing the car off the curbs of the road just to stay on the road because I was so drunk. And 
you know, like it was only through the, my guardian angel and the grace of God that I didn't actually kill myself or someone. And that was, uh, it was a very wild time for me. And, um, and, and that went on for quite a few years, actually, I have to say, uh, right through my university years. At that time too, I was um, experimenting with drugs, uh, marijuana mainly. And um, I remember a time when I actually woke up um, I was smoking a joint and I woke up about four hours later with absolutely no recollection of what had happened in the last four hours. It was just a, a complete um, blackout of that time. I don't think my parents or anyone really truly understood um, how much I was drinking at that time and, and what I was doing. And um, my sexual morality too was very dubious. I'm deeply horrified at the way that I treated some women back in that day. And, um, and I think that I was exposed to pornography at an early age and um, I didn't realise that at the time and, and, um, and it was very distressing for me to reflect upon that time. So anyway, I, I finished my surveying degree. I, I got a job on a gold mine uh, and that, the good thing about that is I saved up lots and lots of money because there's not much to spend on when you're out there and I decided to go backpacking around Europe and I spent three months uh, traveling around uh, via the trains uh, all over the place, um, seeing some amazing things. And interestingly enough, I was reading this book called The Tao of Pooh, which is a real kind of new agey uh, sort of book, um, which was, I guess, the state of my spirituality at that time. You know, I was in, in my um, early 20s uh, exploring, uh, I guess, the meaning of life. I remember coming back up and sitting under a tree with this book and thinking, gee, this guy, Jesus Christ, actually really like him. He loves the poor, he's not materialistic, he's got his finger on the pulse in terms of peace and all of those things. He's pretty good, but I actually remember thinking to myself, this thing about him being the son of God, that, that's, that's impossible. Um, that can't be, that's just impossible. He's just one of those great guys of history like Gandhi or, um, you know, Buddha. And then um, I was backpacking around Ireland or hitchhiking around Ireland. And I decided that it was time for me to um, stay in one place for a little while. So I met someone who was working on an archeological dig in the west of Ireland, um, St. Brendan's Cathedral. I went to the, to the chief archeologist and I said, oh look, can I have a job? And, uh, and, and I was a surveyor, so uh, they were, they were quite happy to, to put me on. Uh, it was a volunteer position, not paid position. So I ended up staying there for three months. And, um, and at that time, my best mate um, told me he was in Perth. He told me he was getting married and I needed to come back and be in the wedding party for that. So I was contemplating my moves. Should I stay in England uh, or should I fly back to Australia or what should I do? So um, I decided what I'd do is I'd get a job in England and then fly back for the wedding and then come back. So um, I left Ireland, went over to London, and I knocked on a, on a door, at aid one door uh, in particular, and, um, and I got a job uh, on, for a company that navigates uh, the ships and the oil rigs around the North Sea. And uh, what I did is I used to fly a helicopter out from Scotland all the way out to the rigs in the North Sea, even up as far as the Arctic Circle. Um, I'd shift the rigs, um, and, then, and then once I've moved the rigs from one place to another, I'd get helicoptered back to Scotland. And then I'd typically have, you know, two or three days off to, because I might be two or three days out in the North Sea and then two or three days off, that was how the schedule kind of worked. And uh, what I did is I found lodgings with a, a lady in a little town north of Scotland, in a place called Hatton, and, um, and I went to live with her. And the fellow who was the boyfriend of this lady who I lived with, um, he was a born again Christian. And I remember um, not long after I arrived, he gave me this book to read and it was called The Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey. And it's, it's a book about the end times. And um, interestingly enough, it's the same book that um, Scott Hahn read when he had his initial conversion, not to Catholicism, but his conversion to being a Christian. So I, he gave me that book and I remember reading it and, and I maybe read 10 pages and I went, oh, look, this is, um, no thanks, thanks, but no thanks. You know, this is, 
not my cup of tea. And then I went on my own merry way, backwards and forwards off the rigs. There was a hurricane, that, another hurricane that came through, and what it did is it busted one of the anchors on one of the rigs, and they had to get me out onto the rig really quickly and restore the anchor and then I could fly home. So it was a one day sort of job. So I remember getting the phone calls like that e the evening before, saying I'm flying out early the next day. And um, I was out the door and normally when I go on the helicopters, because it's a couple of hours flight, um, I'd have a book to read and I didn't have any books to read. And there was this book sitting on the counter just near the doorway. It was the late great planet Earth. And um, I remember just grabbing it out of desperation as I walked out the door. Um, and as I was uh, getting onto the helicopter, I pulled the book out and I was reading it, reading it, reading it for a couple of hours. Um, landed on the rig, uh, got all my gear out, dragged for the anchor, picked it up, found it, um, reconnected a new chain to it, dropped it again. Uh, everything was all good. And I, I think I was all, I was all, the job was all done within probably two hours. And, uh, and I was just waiting on the rig to come home and they'd given me a cabin, an empty cabin, just to wait until the helicopter was coming to pick me up. And, uh, and I was just lying, literally just lying on the bunk, not doing anything, staring into space, reflecting about my grandparents' swimming pool back in Perth. Um, happy, really happy memories. And then just almost unremarkably, it was like, oh, if that equals that and that equals that, da, 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 Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then it was like, hang on, if this is this and then that is that, then da, 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 Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And, and I, I'm just like going, what, what is this? Where did this come from? And, um, and, I'm, and it was like these, these things that I'd heard all started making sense for some reason. And I was a bit stunned and I didn't know what to do. So I said, I'll, I'll, I'll pray. Um, and I said, Jesus, you know, if, if this is true, you know, I want you to please know, let me know, you know. And literally at that moment, um, it sound, this sounds a bit far-fetched, right? But I, I'll describe it how I remember it. It was like the whole cabin filled with this amazing light. And it was felt the light was coming out from, out from my chest out into the cabin um, and I, at that time I experienced the most ecstatic joy that you could, no, I'd never experienced anything like this ever in my whole entire life um, and it knocked my socks off and I remember um, literally getting on the helicopter, flying back to Aberdeen and landing and going, what do I do now? So I went and hunted for a, um, a news agency, would you believe? Um, and uh, I found a, a news agency that had a Bible in it and I went and bought the Bible and I thought, well, this is as good a place as any. And I, so I took the, the Bible back to the house where I was living and, um, and I basically bunkered down in my house for three days and I read the New Testament, Gospel of Matthew, all the way to Revelations in three days. And I remember um, reading it going, wow, you know, it was like, it was an incredible, amazing experience for me and after that three days you know I went back into the office and I, I seriously didn't know what to do. I fortunately back in Australia there's a sister company for the company I was working in in England and I was hoping to get a job back in Australia so I quit uh, the job in, in Scotland um, and I flew back and uh, I landed and I remember uh, my mum actually unpacking my bag and pulling out this bible and going What's this? And I remember that moment of describing to her, saying, well, mum, I'm a Christian. I've found the faith. And um, I remember what she said to me. She said, Craig, don't lose your friends. Um, maybe she's had some experience in the past. Um, people had become born again or something like that. And they um, estranged themselves from their friends. I, I had a really great bunch of friends through um, one of my, my best mate, um, Carl that I actually uh, became a Catholic and, and that's a bit of a story. Carl married a Catholic girl. This girl's family was heavily involved in a, a charismatic community in Perth and I remember going and turning up to the prayer meeting for the first time which was, which was a bit um, um, new for me I have to say um, but I loved it and and this this course was a 10-week course that, that I was literally starting that week and 
the people who are running the course, I said, can I, you know, join in? And they said, yeah, yeah, no, that's no worries. But yeah, you need to attend every every Friday night. I think, you know, it was a, it was a time when the Lord really wanted, was bringing me home, so to speak. One of the, um, the older members of the community uh, was talking to me and said, oh, why don't you actually think about becoming a Catholic? So I said, yep, yeah, look, I'm really open to that. And they said, okay, well, I'll introduce you to our chaplain. Father Chris Ross, who's a Servite over in Perth. And Father Chris and I met and we started doing a one-on-one -on -one RCIA program. And he gave me a little, it's like, a, I think it's a bit old fashioned actually, but it's a little orange book, the RCIA book. And I remember reading it and going, well, look, I've got no problem with that. No, I believe that. Um, you know, like all of these things that the church taught in its catechism, like was not a barrier for me at all. Like everything, I guess it was a bit like when I was reading the New Testament soon after I had my conversion. Like I was reading something and I had no problem believing it. There was no doubt about that. I don't, I can, don't ask me why or how, I, I mean absolute grace, but I do believe that the Bible is actually the Word of God. And then that set me up for everything else that, that came along in terms of my journey at that time to becoming a Catholic. So I was doing these spasmodic um, RCIA lessons with Father Chris, I, I finally um, came into the church. I had my um, confirmation and my first Holy Communion. And I was with those people uh, in this community. So I guess for about the next two years, I was hanging out with these, these people and growing in my faith. I, I'd actually quit my job on the rigs at this time and gone back to university to study my masters, and um, which gave me an added benefit of being able to get to daily mass. There was a chapel uh, across the road uh, from my university where the, the, all the old Christian brothers had retired. I guess like every young man at that time, I was uh, trying to understand my vocation. I was c contemplating or discerning to uh, whether I had a religious vocation or a vocation to marriage. Uh, I applied and joined the Servites. That was the same order that Father Chris was in. And I decided that, you know, I need to give it a shot at least. So um, I, they sent me to Melbourne to uh, be, to do my training over there. Um, it wasn't too long before I realised that, um, that I wasn't being called to the priesthood and I, I left um, and I met my wife and um, we started dating and two years later we got married. In my faith journey, it was such a gift to me. Like I wasn't even looking for becoming a Catholic or a Christian even. You know, like I wasn't even going down the path of, of um, trying to um, even understand who God was. I wasn't even really asking the questions. God in his infinite mercy just decided to say, well, it's time for him to come now. Gave me the, the experience on the oil rig and then made that experience so dramatic, I guess, because he f felt that I probably needed that. If it was a more subtle experience, I probably wouldn't be a Catholic or a Christian today. I just need to be smacked between the eyes. But one, one thing I can say honestly with my hand on my heart is I honestly have not doubted the existence of God and the existence of Jesus Christ as the Son of God and my Saviour and His dying on the cross for my sins for one second since that time. I don't go out to get, get drunk now. You know, I don't go out to, in fact, um, I don't want to lose my wits anymore. I've got no need to do that anymore. Um, it's like, you know, I've got my joy. I found my joy in the Lord. I haven't found, my, I'm not finding my joy in going out drinking with my friends. Angelorum, I guess, is a big thing for our family at the moment. And uh, it was an idea that Lucy, um, my wife, had uh, 
contemplated. The primary mission or the goal of Angelorum is that uh, to help families grow in holiness. So everything that we do around that is, is to support that. So even if that's helping mothers, homeschooling mothers who want to homeschool their kids for various different reasons, for whatever reasons, right? Helping them have more time schooling by helping them with their curriculum and some of these other logistical things and practical things. Look, so that they can be mothers and homeschool teachers to their children, that's a great thing, especially if that content that we're helping them with is Catholic and based on Catholic faith, because I, I don't know if I said this before, but um, there actually is no Catholic distance ed program in Australia. It's all in the US. The first miracle was uh, getting approved. <laughs> the second miracle was getting a place to, to be. Um, thank you, Legion of Mary in Brisbane. So the Lord is wanting, like doors were opening up. Um, surprisingly, it surprised us. I don't want to even say this necessarily, but we were kind of praying that it would fall over because it was just insanity to think that we, we could start a school. But, um, but it didn't. It started, we're now running in our third year. I grew up in Australia as any other normal Australian kid. However, you know, what I know now is like before I was dead, but now I have, I'm alive. I've discovered the pearl of great price. You know, like it's knowing the love of Christ and knowing that what he did for us and, and is doing for us all the time has really been such an amazing transformation of my life from, from, I guess, average to amazing. Like I have eternity open to me and I, 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 like that, that's just, it's so huge that jump between not knowing God and not even understanding or not even asking the questions about who he is and then going through and going, wow, I get to live, be with the creator of the universe and not even, he, was, he existed even before the universe, you know, like and to, to understand the fullness of, of God, you know, that's, that's what's in store for me, or that's, what's, that's what I live now. And I think that there's a real, um, we're all created in the image and likeness of God, and there's a real hole, a real emptiness that can only be, fill, only be filled but by God. And, um, and before my conversion, I, I definitely had that big hole there. But after my conversion, like I was, I guess, restored to my fullness of who the Lord intended me to, to become and be. And, um, and I can only say that, that um, He has saved me. Shalom World brings to you the Catholic faith in all its different dimensions. It can be a faith to inspire you in, in your own living of your Catholic life in society. Shalom World offers you an opportunity of being rich and strengthened in your family life. We live in a culture that needs to have a Catholic presence. We live in a culture that needs to be evangelized by the presence of Catholic teaching and the inspiration to live according to our Catholic way of life. I recommend to you, you're involved, to be involved in the work of Shalom World. May the Lord bless you and bless the work of Shalom World. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.